I don't know about you, but ever since Tier 8 debuted in World of Warships Legends, I have been flat broke in terms of credits, and I've needed to get as many credits as quickly as I can in order to be able to afford the next Tier 8, or to be able to afford to upgrade them, or put on the modules, or anything like that. Everything costs money, and money is in short supply, not only in the real world, but in the virtual shooty boats world as well. And so, the question becomes, how does one acquire a lot of credits in a short amount of time? Well, I've been wanting to talk about this since the Tier 7 premiums had their economy bonuses buffed. Now, every Tier 7 premium ship in the game is at least as good as all the Tier 6 premiums used to be at earning credits, maybe even better. And just personally speaking, I think you can't find a better credit-earning ship these days than the premium Tier 7 pan-European destroyer Friesland. And there are a couple reasons for that. Now, if your goal is to make credits quickly, you're going to want to take out a Tier 7 premium or a Tier 6 premium. It doesn't have to be the Friesland. It can be any ship you feel comfortable in and any ship with which you can get good, consistent games. And then you're going to want to look for a couple of things, and those things are going to be exemplified in this particular battle, which is a highlight from one of my more recent streams. Now, in terms of what gets you the most credits, there are two things. Number one, taking the objectives, capturing capture circles. In this case, we are playing the epicenter game mode, so we'll want to take one or more of these rings. I think we do end up doing that. But the second thing is dealing damage to other enemy ships. And the amount of credits you get awarded by this game, as well as the amount of XP, is not determined by the raw damage numbers. In other words, like 50,000 damage versus 100,000 damage in the top right-hand corner of the screen, completely irrelevant. That number does not matter. Get it out of your head. You do not need to have big 200,000 damage games to make credits. No, instead what you need to do is you need to take away as much HP from individual enemy ships as possible because your credit earnings and your XP earnings are based off the percentage of a total enemy ship's HP that you take away. And thus, this leads me into why I think the Friesland is so good. The Friesland is so good because while it only has four guns, they fire very, very quickly and this thing can melt enemy destroyers very quickly. Now, enemy destroyers, smallest class of ship in this game, smallest HP pool, easiest HP pool to take a big, chunky percentage of hit points from. So, basically, if you go out there in your Friesland, you demolish the enemy destroyers, and you take the capture circles, you can expect to earn a fair amount of credits, actually a lot of credits. We're going to earn just over a million credits in this game, and our damage done total isn't going to be especially impressive. But note that there are four enemy destroyers. Most of the damage we do is going to be against those destroyers, with some exceptions here, like the pot shots that we're taking at the Miyoko. But more than just doing damage, there's something else I want to talk about, and this is just a theory that I have. It's a theory that I think uh, a lot of players probably have, and that seems to be that your credit earnings are somehow tied to the number of ribbons that you acquire in a game. And it just seems like if you can get a ship with rapid-fire main guns, the Friesland is a good example of that, the Atlanta is a good example, if you can get one of those ships that fires very, very quickly, and you can get a lot of shell ribbons, that seems to somehow have an influence on the amount of credits you earn as well. I'm not sure exactly why, or if that's even necessarily true, or something I'm just imagining, but it does seem to be the case, and that's yet another reason why I think the Friesland is so 
so good. Note thus far we've done only 25,000 damage, but we have sunk one of the four enemy destroyers, and when he met us coming around that corner he had maybe like a quarter of his hit points left, about 25%. Not a huge number in terms of damage done in the top upper right hand corner of the screen but an extremely valuable amount of damage because it was a significant percentage of a ship's hp pool here comes the vimar around the corner which is a little bit terrifying uh, given that that ship also has a quick rate of fire it would also be a good cruiser for earning a lot of credits, and I'm sure a lot of people prefer it, but again, I'm using the Friesland because it's just so good at taking out enemy destroyers, better than a cruiser would be, I think, and apparently it can even Citadel Weimar from like seven kilometers away, which is somewhat impressive. I admit I was not expecting that, but the Weimar is almost dispatched. The blue team is working on taking the epicenter rings, and I'm going to enter back here because I don't want to miss out on any of those sweet sweet capture points but of course the one of the rings is occupied by an enemy destroyer so we're going to have to correct that somehow Weimar is still alive but he's got no HP left so sinking a couple shots into his broadside should end up taking him out and there is our second kill of the game i wonder if you can see where this battle is headed with the number of kills we're getting enter the zf6 who is reversing inside of the cap circle and smoking up which causes us to lose vision meanwhile we're still spotted and this miyoko has shots on us so we are also going to smoke up immediately and we probably should be deploying our sonar at this point because if there is one thing that anybody should know by now it's that smoke screens are torpedo magnets and the miyoko does have torpedoes so i suspect they're incoming but the miyoko is also giving us flat broadside so we're able to remove a fair amount of his hp with our armor piercing shells I think that was a little bit of lag there. I don't know what that jumping was. In any case, we're safe inside of our smoke screen. We see the Sims pushing up, which is kind of interesting. I don't think the Sims is necessarily a great destroyer, but I feel like I've been seeing them more and more. And I know my colleague Metajerk likes the Sims, but he also makes a point of liking ships that I think are not super effective. Speaking of ships that usually aren't super effective, the Kagero, no offense to this guy, of course, but you never really see Kagero's doing all that great of a job these days. This Kagero, flat broadside in front of us, spotted dead. There's our third kill. ZF6 gets spotted again. Honestly, I'm not quite sure how he's spotted. I think it's because of the friendly destroyer behind him. He's taking away a fair amount of our hit points because he is a gunboat himself. We're able to dodge a couple of his shells, and there you go, there is the fourth kill. Almost 60,000 damage done, but keep in mind the vast majority of this damage was done against destroyers. And even though it's not an impressively high number, well, the amount of credits we're going to earn for it when all is said and done is going to be impressively high. That just leaves one final enemy destroyer and one final enemy battleship. The battleship is somewhere on the complete other side of the map, completely out of the game, totally irrelevant right now to the outcome, and judging by the fact that this epicenter is contested, well, the Sims is inside of the ring. And here he is at pristine, full health conditions. He's being demolished by my teammates and myself here under some very good focus fire note we get the confederate metal despite our low damage total and we get the kraken unleashed the confederate metal i think is the one that gets awarded to you if you take 20 percent of the hit points of four or more ships or maybe it's six or more ships i don't know but it's based on the percentage of hp that you remove from a certain number of enemies and so is the high caliber metal that's why you sometimes see yourself getting the confederate especially even on low damage games especially if you've dealt a lot of damage to destroyers so that right there the fact that you get the metals with you know unimpressive amounts of damage should be another indication that it's the percentage of hp that you take not the total damage done number and 
By the way, we are three seconds from securing the epicenter, and there we go. We get an assisted in capture ribbon, which is also very lucrative in terms of credits and XP earned. So now all that's left to do is potentially get a little bit of farming done on this USS North Carolina, who, while he was at the map border earlier on, has now pushed in far too late. And it looks like he's going to be coming around this island and that we've got clearance over the island to start getting some shots into him. I don't know why we're firing the armor piercing, honestly, because he is pointing away from us and we're not likely to get many pens. We switch to the HE there. I don't think the North Carolina has any battleships to face. No, it's just three destroyers and a cruiser. So if he dies quickly, it's going to be to DPM or torpedoes. And what do you know? He takes a torpedo right on the tail as our high explosive shells begin to pepper his superstructure and remove a couple more of his hit points. But the bottom line here, if you're poor like I am in terms of credits and you're looking to earn more, take out a tier 7 or tier 6 premium ship especially a ship like a light cruiser or a rapid-firing destroyer, and try to deal as much damage to individual ships as you can. It's good to focus on the destroyers since they have the smallest hit points pools and are the easiest to take out in terms of, you know, their total HP, but also the most lucrative. Over a million credits earned for 69,000 damage, 3,100 base XP, pretty nice if you ask me so yeah if you're looking for a way to earn credits this is how i do it hope that helps you out if so give the video a thumbs up consider subscribing if you haven't already and i'll see you next time goodbye